is a very important one. I think probably the number one concern that I've seen with most of my clients over the last 28 years is hyperpigmentation. It's a very complex issue with solutions that are not really that great. A lot of the solutions that are available on the market or recommended by dermatologists and estheticians are geared towards uh, suppressing that hyperpigmentation which can be so much worse and I'm sure many of you have had that experience. Today's video is going to be very unique. It's going to teach you information that you've never heard before. I promise you that. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Nadia Benchakroon, founder of thebeautydoctrine.com where beauty meets health. That's where you find your answers to functional beauty and looking at the skin from all angles, from the inside out and the outside in versus just slathering all that toxic skincare on that can lead to worse skin. So let's understand skin and what are the different impacts that cause whatever issue and today's issue is hyperpigmentation. It's a big one. Let's get started. Let's first understand what it is that causes hyperpigmentation in the first place. Uh, in simple terms, it is the increase of color, which is melanin, in our skin. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Melanin is an antioxidant. And so if our body feels that it needs to protect you more, it's going to produce that antioxidant for additional protection. If you understand that, you are in a very good position to be able to prevent hyperpigmentation in the first place. And what I mean by that is really give your body the protection that it needs so it doesn't resort to overproduction of that melanin, which can lead to the clustering of color in little spots. And that's how you get that hyperpigmentation. That's a simplified version of it. Let's establish the links between the body's need for extra protection to certain triggers in our daily lives. The first one that comes to mind is health related. And so for example, diabetes, when you have such dysregulation in your body as it relates to insulin, which is a hormone that can be a trigger for hyperpigmentation. Another hormonal trigger is cortisol, which as you probably know, is related to stress. So just by having a stressful period in our lives, we can get that hyperpigmentation triggered. The next one is related to other hormones like estrogen. And so that's why very often we see that women that become pregnant because there's that heightened level of estrogen in their bodies, you know, hormonal dysregulation can happen and the inception of hyperpigmentation can happen as well. Hormone replacement therapy could be a trigger to it as well as birth control. And of course this one, everybody knows it because that's all that's talked about in the beauty industry and that's the sun, but the sun is not all bad. So we'll get to the good parts. We absolutely need that daily sun exposure. It just needs to be in responsible fashion so we're not cooking the skin. So what is a safe sun uh, exposure? A safe sun exposure is one that is limited. It is crucial that you get that sun exposure maybe 10 to 20 minutes every morning first thing as you wake up. So try to get in the habit of maybe having that first cup of coffee outside and the reason being is because you're going to help regulate your circadian rhythm and that's really important to hyperpigmentation. So bear with me, I'll make the link here. Um, so when you have that exposure to the sun First thing, that tells your body to start producing melatonin. And so we know melatonin as the sleep hormone. Uh, so it's not just a hormone, it's also an antioxidant. It's one of the most powerful antioxidants that there is. So simply getting sun exposure in the morning for 10 to 20 minutes can trigger that melatonin production throughout the day very slowly and gradually. Uh, so at night you have enough, which would be great for your skin, for your sleep, uh, for recovery, as well as to have that really high amount of antioxidants at night. Antioxidants are the answer to so many issues, especially with skin, because when you build up your antioxidant 
levels within the body that builds up your protection uh, from pretty much everything, right? So we know that antioxidants are phenomenal for immune system, right? So that's a protective mechanism. That's what protects our body and keeps us healthy. But also antioxidants are protective for our skin. If we have enough within our body every single day, your body won't feel the need to produce so much melanin when you're out in direct sun exposure, sunbathing in order to protect you. I hope that came full circle for you. So now let's get into the nitty gritty on how to build the antioxidant protection from the inside out. First, there are foods that actually build your internal sunscreen. So the very first one that comes to mind is lycopene. Lycopene is very high in tomatoes, especially tomato paste and tomato sauce. It tends to be concentrated in there. And so in the spring and summer months, you really want to get as much lycopene as possible in your diet. The second thing is to have just raw fruits and veggies. They are naturally high in vitamin C, which is also going to build up that resilience and that natural antioxidant protection from the inside out. And if you haven't heard of glutathione, it is worth researching. Glutathione is known as the master antioxidant. It is built also internally, the most powerful antioxidant that our body makes. Uh, it needs certain foods to actually increase its production. So the first ones that come to mind are broccoli, turmeric, and avocados. Other very powerful antioxidants are green tea. I personally love matcha. I consume matcha every day. Um, resveratrol, I'm just grabbing all of my supplements here, uh, which you can find on thebeautydoctrine.com. That's where I curate all of my favorite uh, skincare, supplements, tools that can help you age your best from the inside out and the outside in without all the nasties. Resveratrol is an excellent antioxidant, very powerful. It comes from the grape seed and the grape vine. Of course, a vitamin C. Um, I love this one here, NutraChamps, and I have Ancient Nutrition as well. Both of these you can find on thebeautydoctrine.com. The last thing I'll talk about, or one before last, when it comes to antioxidants is vitamin D3. I love to take this one in the morning. This is actually magnesium, zinc, and vitamin D3. D3, when taken in the morning, not only increases our immune defenses, but also is great to help us with that production of melatonin during the day. Zinc is in that formulation, which helps build our defenses. The last supplement that I'll talk about is sleep. So you need something to de-stress and to help you sleep better. This is a great blend of herbs and adaptogens. I love adaptogens because they help your body adapt to stress. And why is this extremely important in combating and preventing hyperpigmentation? Because the more stress we have in our life, the more depleted we are in antioxidants. And what are antioxidants? they are our defense army so we need to keep them high so we need to be able to reduce and also adapt to stress i love cinnamon as it can be a great regulator for insulin it can helps prevent those insulin spikes so it's really great for insulin resistance and if let's say we have um you know meals that are high in sugar or carbohydrates it's really nice to pair them up with cinnamon however if you have perioral dermatitis like myself, you want to avoid it because it's a big trigger. So you have all the other antioxidants that I've mentioned so far. So take your pick or have a blend of those. Just avoid cinnamon if you tend to have perioral dermatitis. Now that we've covered diet and supplements, let's go on the outside and talk about topicals. And so very similarly to, you know, kind of the internal protection, we need to load up on that vitamin C. However, in skincare, vitamin C can be a very complex topic because I would say 99.99% of vitamin C serums or vitamin C creams, they have L-ascorbic acid, which is not so great for you. L-ascorbic acid is unstable. It's sensitizing. It's got a bunch of issues. So we want a vitamin C that's you know, oil soluble that can penetrate easily into the lipid layers of the skin without the need of penetration 
enhancers like this sodium EDTA which is not good and that's what you'll find on a lot of skincare so when you go to my website there is a blog dedicated to teaching you about all the different types of vitamin C ingredients to look for and of course there is a collection of vitamin C serums that I vetted that I use that are fragrance free they don't have sensitizers and they are safe for even the most sensitive skin types topical vitamin C is a must you never want to skip it day or night I know a lot of dermatologists will recommend just a vitamin C during the day and then do other stuff at night no <laughs> we want to build that antioxidant protection consistently and if you're not using the irritating one which is ascorbic acid you don't have to fear that interaction with your retinoids and any other actives that you're using at night you won't have an issue so vitamin C day and night a good gentle retinoid because we don't want to go with those really high concentrations when you go with high concentrations of actives what happens is that you're sensitizing the skin you are lowering its ability to defend itself and then you're gonna fall into that loop of weakened skin barrier hence you step outside the Sun will hit you you'll get pigmentation just from a different source because now the skin is weakened it can't defend itself as well and this is a cycle I see very often in skincare is a lot of people and tell me if I'm wrong or right give me your experience in the comment section many many people that use lots of actives they end up with worse hyperpigmentation and it all boils down to increased sensitivity uh, when you're peeling the skin off so people that go and get all kinds of lasers and chemical peels they might see that great result right away you know when the the you know the impact the initial impact settles down they'll see that the skin looks smoother more glowing but then check on them six months later and probably that hyperpigmentation comes back angrier and so much more aggressive and so the idea here is to still use all of your actives you want like the right vitamin c you want the right retinol and again if you go on my website you'll find really gentle retinoids and retinoid or retinol alternatives as well for those that are sensitive to regular retinols um, so you want those vitamin c retinol you also want antioxidants like niacinamide uh, azelaic acid those are really powerful uh, that can help you know inhibit that tyrosinase so the tyrosinase is an enzyme that causes browning within the skin so there is that reaction that happens when you're out in the sun or even when you're exposed to heat many people don't think about this trigger when it comes to hyperpigmentation and so if you know a baker somebody that's always putting you know professional baker that's in front of the oven you'll see that they have hyperpigmentation on their arms uh, people that are out in the garden a lot or if you sit by a pool a lot you know the UV can be really really strong when mirrored by water azelaic acid is another ingredient that's phenomenal for hyperpigmentation we just don't want it to be in a really high concentration again to avoid that sensitivity Versine is a really good option and you can be doing everything I just mentioned if you're skipping sunscreen or you're not using the right sunscreen then it's all in vain so uh, make sure to use a good zinc oxide based sunscreen it's a physical sunscreen that can create that barrier between you and the sun and give you that ideal protection and again you guessed it all of my favorites are going to be on my website very important one thing to look for if you have your favorite sunscreen at home and you love it at least check for this you want this type of ingredient to not exist in your sunscreen otherwise you are creating the hyperpigmentation every single time you are in the sun there is that potential of you know triggering it and that's citrus any citrus ingredient so if you see so check your ingredient list right now pause this video and go grab your sunscreen make sure it doesn't have anything that remotely sounds like citrus so lime lemon neroli bergamot grapefruit orange peel we don't want those and you know you'll be really surprised to find out that many sunscreens actually have them and talking about citrus this may come as a shocker to many of you drinking citrus in direct sunlight just consuming it internally can create that trigger and so we don't want any citrus based cocktails or lemonades or orange juice when you're laying out in the sun especially if you're one that's susceptible 
to discoloration. I hope that this video was helpful for you. Please let me know in the comments in what other videos you want me to make. What are the topics that relate to skin that you want me to talk about? If you enjoy this content and you want to see more of it, please go ahead and subscribe and share this video with somebody you care about. Let's keep that skin healthy, radiant, and hyperpigmentation free. We'll see you next time, I hope. Until then, be well, be safe, be beautiful. Take care.